what is going on everyone welcome to another video i wanted to jump on here and give you guys an overview of the turbo setup for the rs project just a little background on everything um i purchased this kit i believe it was um late of 2021 um this kit was actually supposed to go into the car this winter um but unfortunately we blew up the motor so that put things on hold and in the meantime we also purchased an oven for the shop so now the whole evo project unfortunately is a little bit on the back burner but i wanted to jump on here and kind of go over the kit with you guys see what i have planned for the evo um, I did notice in the last about a year or so that these are becoming more and more popular. So I figured I'd just jump on here, go over my setup, my situation, what I want to do with the car, and show you guys some of these awesome, awesome parts that, uh, that were supplied by some really, really good companies. We might as well start with the Morrison Fabrications full twin scroll turbo kit, including the downpipe downpipe elbow as well as the dump tubes this kit is honestly one of the nicest kits I've ever seen the quality of the welds and everything that comes together with this kit is is absolutely awesome um, down to the flange itself you can just see how nice everything is as well as the runners inside So after I figured out what I wanted to do with the car, I reached out to Morrison Fab and Annika as well as Matt really took the time to answer all the questions I had as far as what's going to be the best setup for me, what's going to be responsive, what's going to work best. So we settled on this twin scroll uh, T4 kit. Um, the reason why we went with T4 was because of that guy right there and we'll get into that in a minute. And Matt actually went through a lot of the technical side of what's what he's going to do with the manifold, how he's going to route it, what size runner we're going to use, and how everything works as far as as far as the motor and the turbo and the twin source setup working together. As much as I want to make a thousand wheel horsepower, which would be awesome to have, the reality of it is as as soon as we get that on the street, the cars become technically undrivable you know they're awesome for the late night runs or the drag strip but as far as daily driving or taking the car out to the mountains or anything of that nature they become not that they become totally unusable but they're less friendly to just get up get in it and run it so the idea behind this kid was to be as as responsive as possible as well as have that kind of quote unquote big turbo feel so we went with a g30 900 turbo which will have a good response along with our quote unquote small runner manifold from uh, morrison fab and then there's a, a whole reason behind that there's a whole lot of data backed up also behind it that these manifolds technically the small runner manifolds are good up to about eight or nine hundred horsepower after that you want to upgrade to a larger amount of uh, a larger runner manifold that will help with a lot more flow for our use we want to make between six to seven hundred wheel this manifold will be just perfect matt actually went into a lot of details as far as the design of this manifold and all the runners and the length of them are actually designed to work with the pulse of the motor uh, which is a lot of the time overlooked or not even mentioned and that, that's something that I had no clue about. Matt took the time to explain everything to me um, so everything's kind of designed to work with the pulse of the motor and actually help with spool as we have a divided setup with this whole entire kit you can see here we have the two dump tubes the elbow for the um, the elbow with the O2 sensor bungs as well as a full v-band downpipe um, that will eventually mate to a v-band uh, exhaust now paired up with all of that I have 
two waste gates obviously for our divided setup as well as a race board blow -a valve that would go along with the kit um, we actually coated all the rings black as you can see there so that will clean things up a lot and of course we have our g3900 twin scroll divided setup with a stainless housing and to cool things down i purchased this four inch which might be a little excessive but i think it'll be just fine this is a klm um, four inch intercooler and it has their wiggins clamps so we have those so the entire setup will be done with these clamps from throttle body all the way down back down to the turbo i'm hoping once all this is installed and ready and and running um, it will give us the setup that we've kind of always dreamed about which is kind of a big turbo feel but responsive we don't want a lazy car on the street on the road i think it'll be good to do some highway runs it'll be good for the mountains once we decide to take it upstate or or over the pond to connecticut and it'll be just a good or all around evo street car that'll be just a lot of fun to drive with the response that we're looking for that pretty much covers the turbo setup of the car so you might be wondering it's like all right well you have all this stuff what motor is going to be what's what's happening with everything else well i've decided to do a 2.2 liter uh, from boost and performance so like i said the shop always takes priority but as soon as we get the oven up and running and everything's kind of settled down, we'll be sending over uh, the spare block I have to boost in performance to kind of get everything going. Um, I think a 2.2 liter paired with the setup is going to be just right as far as response um, and revving it out. You know, the turbo is not huge, so I think we'll have a good mid to top range. And I, that's essentially what we're looking for. Um, we don't want a crazy response monster, but at the same time, we want it responsive enough that we could just get in it and go. Along with that T2 liter, we'll be doing more than likely a radium uh, full double pumper setup. So we'll have plenty of fueling. Um, at the moment, I have 1650 um, injectors. So we'll see if we keep those around, at least to start with. And if we need to upgrade those, we will. But as far as fueling, that's what we'll be running in the Evo. After the fueling, we'll be moving on to the head. So at the moment I have GSCS threes, as well as all the valve train components already done in the head. Um, the next step is going to be to port the head. So we have optimal flow through everything. We don't have anything to worry about. And it's gonna help this setup breathe even better. And then finally going back down to the bottom end of the motor, um, we will have a billet crank um, I-beam rods as well as boost and pistons to go in to make sure that everything's nice and durable. I think the motor is going to be rated at a thousand. We're going to only be running it at around, let's say 650, 700, depending on what we can make on this setup. That's what I'm hoping for. Hopefully we'll get there. And I also have a really, really nice infinite Evo oil pan that will be going on the car as well to help with any oiling issues as well as billet um, pulleys and an ATI damper to kind of help along with the longevity of the motor so try and make this as reliable as possible I know this is a built car so they can only be as reliable as, as we can make them but I'm doing everything I can to make it as good as possible this thing is just gorgeous. And of course, to keep things interesting, I have a bunch of little smaller parts that I'm not going to mention now that are going to pull this whole entire build together. I'm super excited for all of that. Um, I just can't wait to get back into this. Like I said, the shop comes first as always. So the Evo's on the back burner, but I just wanted to hop on here kind of got kind of show you guys what's what's planned for this whole setup i've had this since 
a long time now just been sitting in boxes but this g30 900 i think should put us to exactly where we need to be paired with our morrison fab turbo kit and all the turbo smart goodies as well as the klm cooler with all the bands these should look pretty awesome in there all said and done it should be a really nice clean responsive nicely powered setup and then we'll just keep it moving I want, I, one thing I wanted to mention was I'm building this car to be as street friendly as possible. I could, if I really wanted to, because I've obviously spent the money on it, go all the way to eight, nine thousand wheel horsepower. But I think the goal for most of my cars is for them to be enjoyed on the road, on the street, and have a dual purpose as far as being quote unquote race car, as well as a street car. I think that way you get the best of both worlds. You can still enjoy the cars. And eventually if we get tired of street cars, which I don't think we ever will, we can build a badass race car. But with that comes figuring out what type of racing we want to get into, whether it's road racing, drag racing, Auto X, you know, there's so much out there. So it would be a purpose built car eventually. But I think for now, this is gonna be an awesome setup. So I just wanted to share that with you guys again. And um, let me know what you guys think uh, down below in the comments, what I should change, what I should do differently. You know, I'm I'm pretty pretty stuck with this. I'm, I'm extremely happy with everything. So I can't wait to get all this together and and have it running uh, one thing I wanted to mention this car will be going on standalone I already have a dash display um, this more than likely will have a custom harness as well to kind of pair everything up and um, and go from there so hope you guys enjoyed just a little bit of insight as far as what I'm doing with the car what the plans are even though it is on the back burner it's still on my mind every day so I'm not going to stop until until she's she's done and of course being that this is an evo that i've been waiting to get back for a long long time she's not going anywhere all right guys i'll catch you on the next one thanks